Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to make a better RFP. Uh, a while ago I wrote a blog post called RFP WTF, uh, which was kind of uh, my angry rant against the RFP system and everything that it entails. And today we're going to try and keep it a little more positive, focus on uh, being proactive uh, about, uh, about the topic, but uh, I think it's still a great topic. Um, RFPs are um, they're just a part of business, we field them all the time, and often they're the way you get a project started. And uh, for that, that level of importance, I'm always surprised um, both by, uh, I guess, what's lacking when we don't get an RFP at all, um, and when we do get RFPs, how kind of misguided that process can go. So uh, I just want to take a minute today to, um, to uh, kind of talk about um, some basic ways in which I think the RFP process could be improved and uh, things that you should think about as you're putting one together um, if you want to get the actual best result. Because at the end of the day, your goal is to get the best provider, the best vendor um, for your project. So how do we do that? Um, the first thing I'll address is, um, is it just, oh, I got do's and don'ts here, right? Do provide, inf provide information. Um, one of the things that surprises me is the number of projects that start without any RFP at all, um, including projects that require um, relatively complicated spec documents uh, for what it is that we would be proposing. And people will start that process out um, just by hitting up your contact form and saying, and basically saying, hey, how's it going? You know, um, can you send us a proposal for this project? And it's like, well, great, can you send me some details? You know, so, um, RFPs are good things. You, sh you should have something together when you start asking people to put proposals together for you. So what should you have together? Um, uh, basic spec information about the project. Um, you should be able to give people um, an idea of how big your site is, um, how many pages of content do you need copywriting or not, do you need photography or not. Um, think about um, as much as possible uh, the things that your provider isn't going to know. Uh, a lot of RFPs provide a lot of information and it's like general information about the internet that any competent provider would know. Like I know what SEO is. I know how to, uh, I know what a good content management system is and, and how that comes together. I don't need a, an elaborate description of what those things are. I need you to tell me the things that I don't already know. Things that are specific to yourself. Um, because those are the things I, I by definition can't know. Um, at the start of the process. So focus on things that are specific to you, that are specific to the project, that your vendors aren't already going to know, and uh, try and give them everything that they would need to be able to provide you with a quote. That's, that's the first and foremost goal of any RFP, is actually to start by providing information to people so that they can, so that they can complete that task. Um, however, the first don't I have on here is dictating format. Um, dictating format does not really help anybody. I think there's this illusion out there that you're going to get all your proposals back formatted exactly the same way and you're going to lay them all out on a table and compare paragraph one to paragraph one, paragraph two to paragraph two, and have this beautiful apples to apples process. Um, if that happens in the real world, I'm not aware of it. Um, you're always going to get back something that's a little bit different from everybody. And, and here's the thing, um, that's a good thing. Um, you need to embrace that difference because it tells you something really valuable about the people who are bidding on your project. Um, what people choose to include or not in their project and how they choose to present themselves is extremely important meta information about the providers that you're specking. Why would you want to why would you want to homogenize the field when your whole goal is to separate the wheat from the chaff? Right? If somebody sucks at putting RFPs together, don't tell them how to put one together. Let them come back with a load of crap and then you can throw that one away. Right? Only look at the best RFPs. Um, seriously. <laughs> um, I, I really don't understand why people approach this as if you want them all to be the same. You want people to showcase their differences, allow them to be different, don't dictate format. Um, however, do outline your needs. Um, so regardless of the formatting, there are some things that you absolutely need in a proposal versus not. Um, you're not going to accept a proposal that doesn't include a breakdown of the timeline and costs of the project. Um, 
You're, you're not going to include a proposal that doesn't describe the deliverables or that doesn't give you a, a certain amount of minimum information that's going to be required. So you're going to have some requirements. Definitely let people know what those requirements are. Um, and in some cases, depending on what type of entity you are, a government or educational entity or a large corporate structure, if there really is something you need, um, then yeah, be upfront about that. Let people know what they are. But really take a minute to differentiate um, um, needs from wants. And if there's, there are things that maybe you'd like to have, but they really aren't requirements, feel free to leave those off and see if people provide them or not. Um, you know, uh, um, do people volunteer references if you don't demand them? That's, again, an important signal that people could be sending you about what kind of provider they are. Um, those are the type of things that, that I tend to think about as things where you're giving people an opportunity to differentiate themselves from each other, which, again, is the point. Um, Finally, uh, don't assume process. Um, the other thing that always jumps out at me is that uh, people will occasionally dictate a set process for how the RFP procedure is going to go because the, the RFP is kind of focused on the, the, the P part, the proposal. Um, it's a document. And that document is really just an artifact of the process. Um, it's the entire proposal process that's important. It's the conversations you have. I mean, it's how people arrange those conversations. It's how they communicate. Do you establish a rapport with those people? Um, you know, uh, uh, all of these things make up an important part of the picture for who you're choosing for your product, for your project. And um, uh, I think you do yourself a disservice if you lay out a process and it's going to be exactly this way. I've worked on RFPs where um, where people refuse to communicate. They're like, well, we literally will not talk to anyone um, until we have proposals and then we'll select vendors that we talk to. Um, or I've seen ones where they would talk to people, but only if everybody was on a call at once at the same time so that any question that was asked, everyone heard exactly the same answer. Um, things like that are just not helpful. Um, they, um, again, they cut into people's ability to differentiate themselves from the competition. And um, that isn't just bad for you. It's bad for the person proposing to the extent that you are uh, disincentivizing them from doing the proposal at all. If I can't talk to you and establish some rapport as part of the project, if I can't figure out uh, roughly how many people are bidding on a project, and is, am I you know, one of three or four, or am I one of 100? You know, um, do, I, do I have a real shot at this project? Um, why am I going to take the time to put a proposal together? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a reality that you're essentially asking someone to do you a favor. You're, you're saying, take hours of your time to sit down, assemble a proposal on the chance that you're going to get a project. Um, and it's often a slim chance, right? So when that's the ask that you're putting out there, you have to understand that the other person's going to be looking at this and asking themselves, is this worth my time? And what you really want is for the best vendors that are out there to look at that document, to look at that request and say, yes, this is worth my time. I am going to respond. And so you need to do things that facilitate that and that allow those people to differentiate themselves from the pack so that you can make the best decision and so that they have a reason to respond. So in a nutshell, that's what I'm trying to get at with today's topic. Um, I hope you found it useful. Thanks again for, uh, for tuning in and listening, and I'll see you next time.